you're talking about ten dollars roughly here for your entire system. Now you can buy a a nice box cooker for about three hundred, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I've compared them, and this works just as well as the three hundred dollar box wow. cooker. The solar cookers that we have here, cooking away in the bright sun, serve as a refrigerator at night. And this is surprising to many people, but that's the way it is. Now, I'll explain the physics real briefly. You do the same setup. Uh, th there's one change I would recommend for refrigeration since the cold falls down. Instead of see here, we've just got the bag sitting over that. I've got it tucked a little bit. Keep the warm air in, but at night. I would go ahead and put the bag around the jar totally and uh, seal, scrunch it off at the top and use a twist tie and, and just secure it. You can do that during the day cooking too. If it's too windy or something, that, that's a, another trick you can do. Get a little more extra warmth out of it. And in winter, you want to you wanna tie off the bag with a twist tie. And by the way, in winter, you lay it down pointing to the sun, which is way in the south here. Because uh, we're, uh, you know, so far north. Okay, but I have boiled water in winter. Professor at BYU said you can't boil water, and I showed him I did. I boiled water right there in February <laughs> in Utah. Okay, so now at, at night, here's what happens. This thing uh, produces uh, uh, infrared, and that infrared reflects, hits the reflector, and goes straight up to the sky. Now you want to do this in a field on a clear night, and when it's and that's that's all there's to it. To it, the uh, infrared goes up into this enormous heat heat sink we call outer space, and uh, that's it. It, it uh, cools off then uh, very well. And at night, just like you put your hand in here in the sun, it's very hot. At night, after about 15 minutes, you put your hand in here and it's cooler. It's cooler than the ambient air. You can feel it. So, in the morning, before the sun comes up, <laughs> you take your jar and you'll have ice, at least slush. You, if, it's, if it gets down to about 50 degrees uh, overnight, then that's enough for ice to form. So the cooling is about 18 degrees Fahrenheit on this. Then you get ice in there. Yeah. So you can just leave your food in there. <laughs> so you can, you can leave your food. It works as a refrigerator. Uh, it works to give you some ice, some slush, nice treat in the, on a hot summer day. <laughs> now the other cool. thing, okay, let's grab this uh, cooler. One more thing. So once these uh, get up to temperature, so it takes about an hour and 15 minutes to get up to a boiling temperature. Okay, when you've got a quantity, this is a two quart jar, there's a lot of food in there. Canning jar, not mason. Use a mayonnaise jar, it'll break. I've tried. <laughs> okay. Mace, these canning jars are tempered glass. Now, if you just get a simple Coleman cooler or any kind of cooler and you pack that with straw or a wool blanket, you can take your food, whether it's in a, a cooking pot or a canning jar, when it reaches temperature after about an hour and a half, put it quickly in here, cover it with straw, close it up, and it will continue to cook for hours. Uh, just the, it's called the retained heat, and it just continues to cook. And we've used that trick to uh, to go ahead and, and cook food. So, so now you can do multiple cookings in a single day. Okay, now what if the day is cloudy? Then what do you do? You use uh, charcoal briquettes. This is just simply a box that I have lined on the inside with aluminum foil to reflect the heat from the charcoal uh, up onto my cooking plate. I've cooked in this one. You can see it's already a little ashy. I just put the charcoals on. I use two, uh, two tins just to keep the heat of the charcoal from actually touching the cardboard. Then I put this cooking rack in here. Before I had one that's a little longer. And uh, then this, the lid is covered on the inside and the outside with aluminum foil because that's where most of your heat's trying to get out. You start up the charcoal briquettes. How four many of briquettes? The, four. I use four to get up to uh, 400 degrees. Oh. So it's about, uh, <laughs> if four was, it seemed about perfect for us. You cook for about an hour. And uh, notice there's some holes in the sides to let the air flow in so the jerk, uh, charcoal briquettes can burn. In winter, 
I, I haven't tried in winter, but they say that you go ahead and put a blanket over the top of this to help retain that warmth in there. That's all there is in to it. In winter time, this is the orientation in this far north in Utah. Basically, we put this uh, flatter side on the ground, and the sun is at about uh, 27, 30 degrees. Hits here, hits here, and then, oh, um, well, if you, the, just hand me the, the round thing there. The, yeah, the metal. This is a support for a bucket. You can use this smaller one for a jar. But you, you don't want to have the jar or the cooking pot sitting right on the plastic. It gets too hot and wouldn't work too well. You set that there, reflector at the bottom. You want to secure that reflector a little better. Gravity's not helping me so much here on this side. Put it here, put your cooking pot or jar there. And that's how you cook in the winter. It takes longer, even so, because at the angle, then, then the, uh, the sun's light has to go through more atmosphere and so on. But it does cook, and I have boiled water in winter. This is a way to hold the, the pot, if you'd like. And there are more pictures and instructions that you can get out on my web site, which if you just um, Google Dr. Dr. Space BYU, That'll bring up my website, and down at the bottom we have pictures of these uh, solar funnel cookers and links to written explanations. The food that came out of the jars.